Hey guys, ABC, hey uh, JT back once again, and I'm back in the record room. And this is a video in response to uh, Jerry from Dark Side Vinyl. Um, you know, I just discovered Jerry uh, through uh, Rich Strickler. Uh, he's from back in PA, back east. And, um, you know, a really touching uh, uh, premise for a video. I really like it. Um, all about family. And Jerry, um, you know, he wasn't specific, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, he had lost a, a family member recently, and um, I know we can, most of us can all relate to that. So uh, uh, I just couldn't get this out of my head, this contest. I wanted to go ahead and participate, and, uh, and here it is. It's uh, very simple. He, uh, Jerry suggested to show records that remind me of my family. And secondly, uh, show a record or CD that a family member uh, gave me. Uh, and three, um, and I like what Rich did, uh, spell family any way you want. And I just took the word family and went right down the line. Uh, so uh, let's get started. But first of all, Jerry, this is to you. Cheers. Uh, nice to meet you. And... Uh, yeah, I'm out here uh, out west uh, in Reno, Nevada. Anyway. All right. Let's get started. So, show records that remind me of family. And, you know, I got to start with mom. Uh, mom was uh, an entertainer, a uh, showgirl. Uh, she worked with a lot of big names in the, uh, in the early 50s uh, through the mid-60s. And... Uh, Let's see here. You know, Mom loved Julie London. She loved a lot of uh, great classic uh, entertainers. And this is such a good uh, record. Uh, Julie is her name. I'm fortunate to have two of these uh, originals um, on vinyl. And uh, the great Barney Kessel on guitar accompanies uh, Julie on vocals on this record. And I'm going to show you. Uh, the songs, Cry Me a River, is a big one. And this is really, I feel it's her best record. Because it's her uh, and Barney and, uh, and a bass player. And that's it. Inside 2. And then uh, when Mom worked... Um, city to city with uh big shows i i won't uh go into it but uh i think in particular her mom was with sammy uh in chicago and my mother would run into this woman um billy holiday and uh i told the story before uh, mom would um whenever she got a chance billy would be in the hotel lobby and my mother would go over and uh and just hang out with her you know sit with her and my mother said just what a wonderful uh, person uh, she was. Uh, she, throughout my life, she told the story uh, several times about uh, when she had the opportunity to visit with Billie Holiday. And there's a picture of Billie. And this record, I mean, it's just unreal. You have, again, you have uh, Barney Kessel on guitar, uh, Red Mitchell playing bass, uh, ben Webster, the great Ben Webster, tenor sax, uh, Harry Edison, sweets on trumpet, uh, Jimmy Rawls on piano. I mean, she, Billie Holiday always had the best. So that's mom. And, uh, yeah, you know, I lost my mother in 2013 and I just don't get over it. And a big part of, um, me and the vinyl community is all my influences from, uh, mom and dad and my sister, Michelle. Uh, my family is getting really small, so it's very important. My son, Sean's in the other room. It's first day of spring break. And uh, so he's with me today and as, uh, as mommy is at work today. Uh, so, well, let's move on. So secondly, uh, let's go to uh, my sister, Michelle. And uh, my sister, Michelle is older, three years older than me. And uh, she's really, really a big influence on me uh, musically. And as a kid, 
as an eight-year-old kid, this record played constantly in our home. Sergio Mendez in Brazil, 66. And uh, there's a vocalist on in the uh, 60s and 70s with Sergio Mendez, Lanny Hall. And uh, she's just an unbelievably uh, great vocalist, great singer, wonderful quality to her voice, deep, rich, uh, I'll just say sexy, really wonderful singer. And if you, I would highly recommend for anyone to revisit the early uh, Sergio Mendez uh, and Brazil 66 records, but uh, in particular featuring the great Lanny Hall. And Lanny is in the middle. So I would hear this record just all the time, and to this day, uh, I love this music. It's it's so 60s, but it's just it's just fantastic music, really. Pop Brazilian. And then my sister was a big fan of uh, Laura Nero. And uh, at age 13, 14, this record was around all the time. I would put it on. Uh, I would bring it over to my uh, my girlfriend's house and uh, play it, and it was just great. So Laura Nero. Okay, and that's Michelle, my sister. And then let's move on to uh, my wife. Now, my wife is from Thailand, and we've been married for 17 years, uh, I was fortunate to meet her in my hometown here in Reno, and she didn't even know what a Reno was. She was just over here on leave of absence from uh, from Swiss Air in uh, out of uh, Zurich, Switzerland. And my wife, her her favorite records. Now here's a pop star from Thailand, and I'll show you. They call him P Bird, and his name is Bird McIntyre, and uh, he is a big big, big pop star from Thailand. He would be the equivalent of, let's say, Neil Diamond uh, was, let's say, in the 70s, in the 80s. Um, he just, uh, I mean, just thousands and thousands of people would go to see P-Bird in concert. And he's a really great entertainer and very, very good music. And that's uh, June. That's my wife when she was uh, a flight attendant with Swiss Air in Europe before she met before she got stuck with me, let's put it that way. And then, uh, you know, she's been over here 17 years and uh, she loves You've Got a Friend. Yeah, so, and she is more familiar with the James Taylor uh, version of You've Got a Friend. All right, let's move on. Now, Dad, that's a big one. My father, uh, you know, my mother was an entertainer, and my father was a, a showroom maitre d', and he worked all the great, a lot of the great rooms on the Las Vegas Strip in the 60s and the 70s, hence the reason uh, I went to so many shows as a kid up and down the Strip. Uh, my father made a point of it for us to go see uh, really wonderful uh, shows. So... Um, Okay, here goes. I've shared before my first rock and roll show, my first rock concert was uh, Elvis at the International uh, because my father was a, a hotel executive, a maitre d' of that hotel, the International. And we were, uh, we were ringside, uh, front and center for that first night of his comeback in July of 69. But a year before, and I'll never forget the show, he took us to see Tom Jones, at the Flamingo Hotel, where he was the maitre d' of um, the candlelight room at the Flamingo. And directly across the front door of the gourmet room was the showroom. And Tom Jones in 1968, at the height of his career, uh, was uh, headlining in the showroom with the, great, the, greatest story the greatest storyteller in the world, Myron Cohen, the comedian from uh, back east from New York, uh, opening for Tom Jones. And this, I, I can't, he's so underrated. Uh, let me show you the songs. I'll never forget the show. It was a complete rhythm and blues 
Soul show. He covers Wilson Pickett, uh, Sam and Dave, uh, Otis Redding, uh, the Beatles. I mean, he, Tom Jones was a hard working entertainer with that, with that amazing voice. And I'll never forget the show. And a year later is when we went to, uh, to see Elvis at the International. So that's dad. Okay. And there's the king. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Um, Elvis was such a nice guy, and he was around the hotel. I'm speaking of the International Hotel um, all the time. He lived in the penthouse suite. And my father's uh, maitre d' Mario Orwella, a Colombian gentleman who was like an uncle to me, was Elvis's personal uh, chef. And Elvis uh, would call down before he had two shows nightly, six nights a week. And now you know what killed the man. I mean, he was he worked so hard that Colonel Parker worked him into the into the ground. I mean, it was just unreal. But Elvis would call and say, hey, Mario, I'm, I'm hungry. And are you going to tell the king no? Mario would go up, cook for Elvis. My father would cover for Mario. And uh, my dad always said he just, he didn't understand why he never had a, a photo taken with uh, Elvis because he, he would see him maybe on average two or three times a week, weekly, because uh, Elvis appeared in the showroom and my dad was right over the other side of the hotel uh, in the International Corps restaurants. So that's uh, the king. And then one more concerning my father. And my dad passed in 2010, and I, you know, his memory is still with me every day. Frank. And I was very fortunate to see Sinatra in 1976. Um, one afternoon, uh, my father was working on the strip. Uh, in, at the Tropicana Hotel, and he says, uh, he says, John, we're gonna, we're gonna. My name is John, by the way. It, you know, it's the first time I've ever said my real name. But he said, John, we're gonna go see uh, Sinatra tonight. And I said, okay. And it was uh, just me and my dad. And it was even for him, it was hard for us to get into the show. It was packed, and the, no reservations. And his friend, the maitre d', was on the door at Caesar's Palace. And we went in and I saw, I saw Mr. Sinatra that evening and wow, it just memorable. So, well, that's my dad. I can go on and on and on about that. So next, oh, here we go. Savoy Brown, Ross Siena. And for my 15th uh, birthday, uh, which is in the month of March that we're in right now. Well, I'm not 15 anymore, guys, right? Far from it. But uh, my sister and my father, and I'll never forget because this is the, I asked for, they said, well, what do you want? I go, well, I uh, go get me a Savoy Brown record. And back then I used to say Savoy Brown. And um, I thought they were going to get me street corner talking or, um, or looking in. And they, they came home and they, I was in my bedroom and they gave me this. And I was a little disappointed because I, I was, had my heart set on uh, one of the two other records. Here's a gatefold. Uh, it, but of course I said thank you. And little did I know this became my, about my favorite Savoy Brown album. The great Chris Yolden on vocals on this. Stay while the night is young. Okay, and the third, uh, the third question is, um, I'm going to do what Rich did. I took the, the word family, and I'm just going to spell it out. So uh, for F, I'm going to go with Fred Neal. Here you have dolphins, and everybody's talking. The great Fred Neal. There we go. And then for A, I'm going to go with Alison Krauss. And this is a more uh, of a gospel uh, record. 
And there's Love Me Like a Rock on here. It's so good. The Paul Simon pen tune. And um, yeah, I love Alison Krauss. And here's the uh, songs. It's more of a Christian-based, gospel-tinged um, record. All right. And, uh, and then for M in the word family, I'm going to go with the song by the great John Martin, um, May You Never, which is such a beautiful song, and I think a lot of you know it. And if you have a chance, listen to it again and just listen to those words. And I highly recommend for you to go on YouTube and look up one of his earliest performances of him just solo on acoustic guitar, him and his uh, wonderful voice uh, singing May You Never. Okay, and for I, I really wanted to do I Can Tina Turner because uh, they appeared in the lounge at the International Hotel where my dad worked and in the showroom was Elvis and we were backstage. Uh, my dad brought me back there and I watched them rehearse for their evening performance and I mean, I was just, I mean, growing up like that, I mean, how, how fortunate was I to be around entertainers like that? So, but I chose another one. I'm sorry for the, okay, here it is. For the letter I in family would be, it's a beautiful day. And back to my sister, Michelle, again, this album would be laying around in the living room when I was 14. And uh, I, I, of course, like that movie, Almost Famous where the boy Cameron Crowe, when he's a kid, uh, his sister was three years older and he would look through his sister's record collection. And pretty much that's what I would do. And I would play Hot Summer Day and White Bird over and over, you know, over the course of a, a year or two. So this is just a, a wonderful record. And for the letter L, I mean, I gotta go with Arthur Lee and company, Love. And uh, I was very lucky to score this record. I got this one about five months ago. And this is an original uh, press on uh, the Electra. The cover is a little beat. The cover is like a VG, but the vinyl, it just plays wonderful. Really, really happy to have it. And I'm going to wrap it up, guys. And, and Jerry, uh, uh, my heart goes out to you, and I'm going to go with, uh, for why, that'll be a person personal one for family, as I'm a family member, and I'm going to go with yes. And these are all the Steve Wilson remasters. Uh, here, my favorite, we have uh, Fragile. And the Blu-ray the Blu version uh, on my home theater in the living room just sounds just amazing with these Steve Wilson remasters. And here we have the Yes album. I really like the uh, Steve Wilson remixes, guys, a whole lot. And Close to the Edge. Well, that's about it. And um, uh, this has been a good one. And uh, Jerry, it's been uh, uh, good to meet you. Uh, not in the best of ways, but uh, hey, take care, and uh, hope to see you real soon. I'll check in on your um, on your videos uh, really soon. And guys, wherever you are in the in the world, it might be uh, nighttime right now or daytime. Uh, take care, stay safe, and uh, bye bye.